All right, who's ready to change? Motorcycle chain, it's easy. I got the LaFawn KPR 200 um, street bike. And today I'm gonna to be putting on a nice XR1, the X-Ring drive chain. Now, the chain that's on there is considered a heavy duty chain. It's not a bad chain. Um, it just does not have any of the O-rings or X-rings in it. So what I'm going to do is change it out to this little bit nicer chain that will last a little longer. Uh, doesn't experience as much stretch as quickly. It will stretch eventually, but not as quickly, so it will have to be less adjustments. Because this chain I have on there has 50 miles on it, there's not any stretch to it at all. So ordering the chain I ordered, which is the uh, 428 size and the 128 length, I should be able to fish it right on and fit exactly the same. Now that's something I'll have to check after it's on the bike, but because they're the same rating, shouldn't be any different. Now the chain that I am going to put on there, because it does have the gaskets or O-rings or in this case X-rings, um, it is a little thicker because it does have those gaskets. So what does it take? So you need to put it on a stand. Again, I got this stand uh, at Harbor Freight. I think it was 30 something dollars with the coupon. Uh, it's aluminum. It's been a nice stand. I mean, I usually keep the bike on it because it helps me move the bike back and forth. Um, but when you do that, you don't get a flat spot on the back tire. I got to get some type of stand for the front tire if I'm going to let it sit over the winter or when the weather's bad because you don't want to develop flat spots on a tire. But on a chain. <clears throat> so. The chain that comes with the LaFawn on the series I got, on this KPR 200, actually has uh, one of the master links in it with a little spring clip. Which, uh, if it doesn't, you're going to need one of these, which is a chain brake tool. Uh, and this one requires a 13mm uh, socket. And so what you would do is you would tighten this down on the chain, back that up, make sure that it matches the size chain too because these do come in different sizes and different diameters, but this one is rated for uh, 420 size chains. Uh, and you would take, and you would clamp it down on the chain, and then you would ratchet this and push the link out, which is not bad. I mean, almost every bicycle you have, if you've done a bicycle chain, it's the same tool, just bigger for a motorcycle. So let's see, oh, bump the camera there, don't do that. All right, so let's see what it takes. This is super easy. So you find this clip, which the posts on it are actually gonna be round just like that. And then you take some needle nose pliers and you'll just get on the post and on the back of this clip and push. And if I can get right underneath and do it slow enough, I can actually just break it loose. There we go. And so that much pressure pops it out. So keep that in mind when you're putting it on. You don't have to put too much pressure, but you do want to put enough that you pop it on and pop it off, but you don't want to bend this because this is essentially the key that locks that chain in place. So once you take this off, set it aside and save it, especially if you don't have very many miles, grab a hold of this link right here, which you see how easily that comes off. Look, it's already got some grease on it, a little bit of road grime, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to take this, and there's a master link on the other side. So push this out. And the reason you want to do this on a stand is you can freely move that back tire, but I'm going to hold on to this because I'm going to actually use this piece here in a second. <clears throat> I'm going to take the new chain that's still in the bag, and you want to make sure you leave it in the bag uh, until you're going to put it on just so you don't pick up any grease or get grease on anything else because these chains do come pre-lubed so they are going to be extremely sticky and uh, nasty. Now chains do have what we call, oh man, there you go on the jeans, do have what we call a direction. And if you get a chain and you look, the direction is always going to be driving the wheel forward. Uh-oh, gotta be careful driving the wheel forward. So as we drive that wheel forward, that's the way we want the chain to go on. So I'm gonna feed that back on real quick because I need it. Because I'm actually gonna use the bike to put this new chain on. <clears throat> so I'll back that up. 
see here's my old chain but I'm gonna find the direction on here which all right this is north this is south the writings that way so I'm gonna take this chain and set it on the back side remember that link that I took off look how much wider these new chains are now that can be a problem on some bikes due to the fact that uh, you can have some type of chain stay and if these new chains are wider you're going to actually cause a problem okay so be sure that if you have a, a chain stay or chain protector especially on dirt bikes that you have an adjustment on there sometimes you have to shim this out uh, even on street bikes but this one's wide enough but I'm going to take the old key that I had and put it in there and I'm going to cheat Oh, I don't know if that one's going to stay. Oh, I may just have to, I may have to cheat it out because this old chain is so much thinner. I'm just going to take now. Push that on. Now, I don't have to lock it all the way, per se. If you're going for the same chain type to the same chain type, you can lock it all the way. But I can't even get the other piece in. So I'm just going to lock it just like that. And now, I'm going to keep tension on the bottom of the old chain. And I'm going to pull this new chain through and snake it. Remember, there is a direction on this. Let's make sure we got the right direction on there. We did. Alright, so I have the right direction. I'm going to feed this new chain in like that. Look at that. Keep feeding it. Keep feeding it. Keeping pressure on that bottom part. All right. And so look, we have the tail of the new chain. And there we go. And guess what? They match up, which is always a good sign. You got to make sure you get the right length chain. Now you can buy chains that are longer. And if you do, they're probably going to be those HD chains like they came off of it. But the older style, well, you have to use the chain brake. You can break these chains like this, but you would actually have to grind this off and pop it out. So, now that I've matched it up, see here's my old chain, there's my new chain. But it's in the way. So just the same way I got the old one off, I'm going to get it off again. I'm going to pop that little key out. And it's always a little harder the second time because I don't have the right angle. And I am popping it kind of up now and over as opposed to with the chain and my hands are a little greasy all right so i pop that key off Woo, came right off it's always a good sign when it goes that easily i'll take that old chain and i'm gonna put it in the box because it has 50 miles on it let's say something happens and i run into an issue with this new chain and and something gets caught up in it or something breaks or you know it's just it doesn't work out that old chain can be a spare chain that I can throw on the bike until I get the other one in the mail because they don't come instantly. Now, my new chain will have, of course, the same key. Same pieces, same link, same type key and everything. But notice that there's nothing on it. It's going to be way too long. If I put that thing in there now, it would be way too long because this has the gaskets in it. I got to put the gaskets on. So let me show you how you do that. It's not hard. And they actually come with the grease. So I'm going to take these little gaskets. Look at that thing. Look how small that is. And if you notice, well, I don't know if you notice, but there's a channel on the inside of that ring. That's why they call them the X rings instead of O rings. That is an O ring gasket, but it's got a little feeder inside of it for the grease. That keeps the grease on the chain, which keeps them uh, nice and lubricated, makes them wear less, uh, so they don't stretch as much, and you don't have to change them, um, or I should say not change them, but you don't have to adjust this out and tighten as much. So now I have my grease in here. I'm going to take, use some nips right there, cut that out, and now I have some fresh brand new grease. I'm going to take my new piece. I'm going to put it on the grease right here. 
you can use a little excessive grease on here it's not gonna really hurt anything um, because it will wear in and I'm gonna get it around on that link right there and bring some over here and get it around the link Ooh, it's kind of messy too just remember that I'm gonna get it and I want to get it pushed into you want to push it into that o-ring look at that turns out good right there like I said too much of a good thing not when it comes to getting it on these o-rings and these links man that is perfect this side goes up all right so that's on but I'm not done yet because remember I got two more o-rings so I'm gonna do some o-rings on the other side and remember the one that I took off or if you notice the one that I took off didn't have these o-rings so on this side I'm just gonna take that o-ring put it all over this little donut ring right here I'll pop it in I'll do the same thing for the second o-ring on this side it's gonna be two on each side total of four so every one of these links has a total of four o-rings for every link now so that's just that much better protection all right so I've got that what do you do now now we're going to take and this has an inside and outside so there's my outside there's my writing on it this goes on the outside but you notice not a lot of space right there because you got to kind of squish it down just a little bit. So I'm going to take those needle nose pliers and I'm going to put them on the outside of these two and I'm going to give it a good little squish. There you go. See that? So now I really got the oil in there or the grease I should say. And you always want this to go forward. So as this wheel turns this way forward, so should your clip. Because if you put that clip on backwards and you're advancing the bike, you can push the clip off. So the clip should go forward. Now, this clip is a little different from the old clip. See, this clip, some people call them the C-clips because they make a C, and some people I've heard them call these D-clips, which, I don't, I mean, I guess so. They both kind of make a C, but this one's not broken right there, and this one is. So, I'm going to take and push that down and I got it started with my fingernail because it, it is relatively easy now I'm going to push in with the needle nose pliers to give it a little pressure and push forward and you heard it clip then I'm going to go back and just give it a little squeeze just to make sure I'm in that groove and then I'm a little bit paranoid so I go back after all that and give it another little push so that's it the chains on chains on bike would be going forward one of the things I can tell you too call me crazy this chain is a little bit quieter also debate some people like to do the clip on the inside most people I've talked to do the clip on the outside. You can do it on the inside. Uh, it doesn't really hurt anything to do a clip inside versus out. But what I will tell you is doing it on the outside, it's easier to do an inspection. Especially if you're uh, leaning over, looking on the side of the bike, because you hear something and you're like, oh man, if this little bugger comes off, the chain will come off. Um, fairly easily like you saw but if it gets pushed forward for some reason because it can happen physics if it gets pushed forward for some reason or it gets bent or if it gets twisted a little bit you could lean over the side of your bike and if you're at the right spot this will stand out especially if you keep your chain nice and clean but like I said putting this on there uh, the O-rings or as they call these the X-rings same size so this was a 428 by 128 series chain uh, you can get an HD chain that requires 
the chain break. Hey, if you want to use that, that's perfectly fine. That chain is going to last you a long time. Okay, a regular HD chain will last a good time. Uh, the factory chain will last a fairly good length of time, but you're going to have to make your adjustments back here as the chain stretches. It's been proven that the chains with these uh, gaskets in them, or I should say O-rings, X-rings in this case, do last a little longer as far as resisting stretch, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to, again, throw away the old chain in case I need it for an emergency. So I hope that helped you out. Um, don't be afraid to work on your own bike. Uh, take it slow. Don't ever break anything, because if you're about to break it, take a step away. Come back, figure it out, and if you do like I do, you know what? YouTube it. Hey everybody, thanks again. This is the uh, putting the chain on my LaFon KPR 200. Um, I've done quite a bit of things this bike. I think I'm pretty much done now. Uh, at 500 miles, I'm going to change all the fluids again. Remember, I put Mobile One in it because I do break ins with Mobile One. Haven't had an engine fail yet. And also, I'm going to change that uh, radiator fluid at 500 miles and then check uh, the valves on it to make sure that uh, the height and everything is adjusted on that at 500 miles. So I hope that help you, uh, helped you. Uh, these chains, again, I'll tell you they're just about 50 bucks. Um, factory chains, I think, are like half that. Hopefully you don't need a chain yet, but if you're like me, preventative measures uh, pay dividends in the long run. Have a fantastic day, everybody.